So here we are then, living with a Z4 Coupe 3 litre SI. You join me approximately three months into the ownership experience of this car actually, and I've covered quite a few miles in the car already. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to summarize what it's like to live with. And of course, this will be slightly different to the review that I did a couple of months ago, which was much more about what it's like to drive. So if, if that's what you want to know, go and check out that video, I'll link it above. Also, if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. We're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And trust me, every single subscriber makes a huge difference to what we're able to access and film. So please do consider doing so. So I suppose one of the most important things really about owning a car like this, which is, you know, really a sports car crossed with a GT, is perhaps usability. This is something that people will probably expect a car like this to lack, but trust me, it certainly does not. What you find with this car is there's just so much storage space and room and everything's just very easy to kind of live with. I mentioned before actually in the review the size of the boot and yeah you can fit a ton of stuff in there. There's also plenty of storage space in the car itself and yeah it just doesn't really feel cramped like a lot of these smaller coupes do. The driving position is just perfect as well. You can get the seat nice and low and also it's very very adjustable you know we've got adjustability in the seat in so many different ways and i just found it so easy to kind of get accustomed to the car and really get the driving position absolutely perfect and actually talking about the driving position i should also mention visibility because it's surprisingly good the window on the back because it slopes down quite sort of narrowly you don't really have a massive gap to look out of but you know it's more than enough to see really and this car has parking sensor as well which makes a big difference That really is what it's all about and you know it's such a usable unit and I've mentioned this again in the review about just how much torque it makes down low that's 232 foot-pounds of torque from 2750 rpm so what that actually means for sort of daily driving is pretty much any gear any speed you've got torque and it just makes it so easy to use because you don't need to worry about having it revved right out all the time just to be going anywhere and also you're not constantly through the gears you know if you're on sixth gear you know doing 60 or 70 miles an hour and you need to accelerate you've got no issues there likewise if you're doing 40 miles an hour in fourth gear you've also got no issues so it's just such a versatile unit and yeah it's it's a joy to live with it's ultra responsive the throttle response is just next level good so yeah it's just a joy to use every single time and the sound is just amazing i mean just listen to it it's, it just wants to go you get tons of induction noise in this cabin as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's something pretty special. I, just, you know, I say this a lot about these six cylinder engines. I just, I just don't get bored of them. They just offer so much. Yeah, it's really quite special. Okay, so I think it's important to kind of address some of the costs involved with owning a Z4 Coupe. It's not the cheapest car to own. I'm sure many of you guys will appreciate that. These cars really vary a lot in value, depending on condition, depending on mileage, depending on spec. These days, you know, this is something I've covered a little bit before, but they definitely seem to be appreciating, or at least holding their value. You can get in these cars for around about the probably five to six thousand pound mark for the really kind of high mileage, maybe worse condition cars anywhere up to 15, possibly even 20,000 pounds these days. However, it's important to kind of compare this to the likes of the Z4M, which is most definitely a more expensive car. Nice examples of that will be anywhere from five to 10,000 pounds more than the equivalent Z4 3.0 SI model. For example, 
a Z4M I was just looking the other day, I think it had approximately 50,000 miles, was around about 25,000 pounds. So it's quite a bit more money and there's certainly an M car tax involved with owning a car like that as well, especially when it comes to parts. And that's another thing that I'm gonna address here just in a few minutes. Another very important thing about getting into a car of this era is the car tax here in the UK. Because unfortunately vehicles made in the mid sort of 2000s, potentially a little bit earlier, get pretty hammered on the emissions regs. And yeah, ultimately that leads to a high car tax rate because that's just how it works over here at the minute for cars of this era. So this cost me 340 pounds to tax for the year, which is a lot of money compared to things these days where a lot of new cars will fall in the basic bracket of basically 150 pounds. So yeah, it's, it's something you've got to budget for. It's certainly expensive. Obviously you can do car tax monthly. I think you can split it over 10 months or you could insure, uh, tax it for six months at a time. So you don't necessarily have to lay out that cash all in one go, but yeah, definitely something very important to consider with these older cars. And obviously some of their, I'm pretty sure the M car must fall into the high bracket actually. So that could even be 500 pounds for the year, possibly more. So yeah, it's a pretty expensive thing that you've got to factor in. Of course, some of you guys might also be wondering about the insurance costs. This is of course something that is very, very subjective. It depends on conditions and the, you know, who the driver is, where they live, how much experience they've got, accidents, points on license. So it's not really something that's probably useful coming from me, but just for perspective, this car cost me about 550 pounds to insure for the year. Obviously I'm a younger guy. So, you know, for some of you who are a bit older, uh, you can probably expect to pay a little bit less than that. If you're younger, you probably expect to pay quite a bit more than that. So it's not too bad. I've got 8,000 uh, miles a year on this policy, which is more than I'm going to do. So certainly covers me in that aspect. Now, many of you guys will know as well, the three litre engine in this is actually reasonably efficient for the time period that it was made. And I've mentioned this in the review, of course, that you can probably get somewhere in the region of 30 miles per gallon when you're driving on those longer motorway journeys. When you're pushing on, don't expect anywhere near that. You're probably looking at maybe 20, 25 MPG if you're not pushing too hard into the high teens. So it's certainly, uh, you know, fuel cost is something you've also got to factor in. Right now here in the UK, uh, fuel is pretty damn expensive. You know, we've just had this ridiculous fuel crisis and right now you're paying well, in excess of £1.35 per litre, which for those of you guys in the US is about $6.85 per gallon. So it's very expensive and each fill up is easily £60. So if you are doing a lot of driving, you need to kind of factor this in. It can be quite costly and yeah, it's gonna take a big chunk out of your wallet. So yeah, just, just be aware of the fuel costs involved. If you're buying Z4M, it's gonna be quite different. Fuel costs and that are gonna be even more. Those engines aren't particularly efficient. That's the S54. So yeah, this is definitely a little bit more affordable than that, but you know, three litre straight six is never gonna be that cheap to run. One of the other things I wanted to just briefly touch on was things like parts cost. I haven't actually had any work done to this car yet, but from the research I've done, parts costs, they're not too bad. And another thing, you know, I mentioned at the start about the M tax is that these cars don't have that and the parts are much cheaper than you might think. So I'm just gonna bring up a couple of the prices now and I'll just run through a couple of things for you. So I pretty much chose like three random parts, if you like. I just went on AutoDoc, which is the parts vendor I've used for a few years now. I buy parts from them for my E30, but just some pretty random things here. An expansion tank, which unfortunately is a thing that goes on these cars sometimes because they crack. That's £35 from an OEM source. Really not bad. The other thing is an engine mount. These are £38 each. It's pretty cheap. And one other random thing is a front control arm, which is 70 pounds, that's per control arm. So yeah, overall, it's not too ridiculous. There are some things that are gonna cost more. For example, these cars have an electric water pump. It's not just a cheap mechanical pump. So I think they're at least a couple of hundred pounds. So yeah, it is relatively cheap to source parts for, definitely cheaper than an M car, but overall not too bad. So one final thing I wanted to cover in this video is do I have any future plans for this car? So when I bought it, I probably mentioned at the time that I didn't really know how long I was gonna keep the car for. It's, I wanna be able to get in and out of cars a bit more these days. And perhaps that's something I'll cover in another video, but it's effectively to do with just how fast the car industry is changing. Who knows how long we're gonna be able to drive cars like this for. So yeah, I'm really not sure how, I'm gonna keep, how long I'm gonna keep it for. I've owned a car for now three months, as I say, and yeah, I definitely don't have any plans to get rid of it. In terms of modifications though, 
Well, I mean, what else can you do, to be honest? I mean, I might upgrade the brakes at some point and just put some drilled and uh, grooved rotors in potentially and some better pads. Get a lot of brake dust off the pads that are on there at the minute. And it is pretty annoying because these silver wheels just get covered in the space of, you know, a few days of driving and it, it's, it's not great. Also, if I was to ever do something like a track day in this car, which I'm definitely considering at some point, you're definitely gonna want something that can deal with the heat a little bit better. So yeah, possibly some uprated brakes. Don't know if I'm gonna do anything with the exhaust. I mean, there's so much induction noise from this engine. I'm not really there thinking this needs more sound. The exhaust actually sound decent, to be honest, uh, even in the stock form. So that's probably gonna stay as it is, but who knows, I might change my mind a bit further down the line. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I absolutely love the way this car is out of the box and there's definitely not much I would change on it. I've also done quite a number of longer journeys actually now, and it's very, very comfortable, surprisingly so. The seats are a little bit on the kind of harsher side, I suppose, and you know, over longer journeys, you do start to just feel your back aching a little bit, but it's nothing too bad at all. And yeah, it's, it's surprisingly good on those longer distances. And I think that's where it comes into the GT element a little bit more. It's something that can do long distances and can do it in pretty good levels of comfort too. But I suppose one of the things that I really want to kind of touch on about this car is it's always an occasion to step into and each and every time I get to drive it, it's like, it just gives you that little bit of excitement. It's like, oh yeah, I finally get to go out in the car again. I get to take on a journey and take on some nice roads and just enjoy it for what it is. So yeah, it's something that's very nice to live with. It just, yeah, it makes you passionate about the car. It makes you enthusiastic about it. And that's really what I'm all about. So I suppose, how do we actually summarize then what it is like to live with a Z4 Coupe? Well, overall, it's a pretty balanced ownership experience. I've done a fair bit of commuting in this car now, and it does that perfectly well. What you find is the clutch is light, the, the pedal weights are light, the steering is a little bit on the heavier side, but it's nothing that you can't sort of get used to. And, and you know, it's just not too bad. It's like a perfect sort of weighting, really. The suspension is perhaps a little bit on the harsh side for some of the roads that we have here in the north of the UK. And it, it can sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable and it crashes through potholes, but, Overall, it's not the worst thing in the world. When you buy a car like this, that's something you've got to expect. So, you know, it was certainly something that I was prepared to live with and it's really not that bad overall. So I think it's fair to say I'm looking forward to doing many, many more miles in this car. I would love to be able to take it to Europe sometime in 2022 and just experience it a bit over there as well. And yeah, also some more journeys throughout the UK. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching the video. I will see you in the next one.